What is up? Welcome to another edition of Sacktown Movie Buffs. Uh, once again, I'm here, and we finally have uh, Jason back in the fold. Uh, it's been quite some time uh, since we've seen him. Uh, welcome back, Jason. <laughs> How you doing? Uh, I'm good. I'm good. Um, I think you mentioned um, I, I've been out for a while because I, I was on a couple. I went on a couple of trips, and I also um, had an injury. I had, I got into a, a, a car accident when I was on one of those trips and one of my hands is injured. Um, but everything's good. Um, I am on the mend and, uh, you know, the whole time I've been watching lots of movies, of course, cause, uh, that's what, that's what keeps me sane. So, uh, I've been keeping <laughs> up good. with, I've been keeping up with the show. I, I confess that I have not watched the old review because I don't want to know anything about that movie before I go see it. Yeah, because my um, review is but, riddled with spoilers. No, I'm just <laughs> I didn't. I yeah, I know you didn't go into. I I would. I know you wouldn't go into spoilers, but I didn't want to hear anything. Like all I know is like the bare bones premise, um, and I, that's all I want to go in knowing. But no, uh, no, after absolutely. I see it, yeah, yeah, after I see it, I'll watch your review. I've watched all the other ones, but it is good to be back and and to put the to put the. Uh, the plural back in Sacktown movie buffs. Yeah. So. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Otherwise it's just there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And nobody <laughs> wants that, you know. Everybody so. wants that. Everybody <laughs> wants that in their life. <laughs> cool. Well, I say without yeah. further ado, man, I say uh, we get right into it. We're going to be reviewing a new film today, uh, newish, um, and that film is going to be The Suicide Squad. Um, so I'll go ahead and take this one on. So, um, so just to kind of back up a little bit, if you've seen the first one, which I don't know, did you like the first Suicide Squad? I did. I feel like it's very unpopular to like that movie, but I liked it. Yeah, I, I liked it too. Um, I had some issues with maybe the ending part of it, but I thought it was fun and funny. Um, you know, it's got a, in just the premise of the Suicide Squad, if for some reason you haven't seen the first one and didn't see this one, is they're basically a group of, like, prisoners or super prisoners, I, I guess, if you will. Uh, they have, like, most of them have, like, either enhanced fighting skills or super powers, whatever case may be. They're all in prison, and they basically are let out of prison on kind of like a work release program if you will to save the world um and and if they do so and they complete the mission they will basically get time off their prison sentence um but they also have a chip implanted in their head that if they try to run or get away or whatever a case may be they will be basically killed on site so um that's kind of the general premise of the first one so the first one had you know harley quinn um you know uh I think Deadshot was in the first one that was played by Will Smith. Um, and then um, we're fast forwarding to this one. This is the sequel and it's the Suicide Squad. Um, so in this one, Harley Quinn is still a star on this one. They do add a bunch of new characters. They basically add um, uh, kind of basically like another uh, Deadshot character, basically. This played well played by uh, uh, Idris Elba. Um, but I can't think of what's the name of his character in this one. Uh, blood something, blood something. Yeah, but he's basically another bloodline dead because he's basically is very proficient with shooting and things of that nature. And there's like a whole host of characters, and so obviously these are action comedy films. Um, so the the mission for this one is basically, um, and I, I don't want to go too much into spoilers because there is something that happens pretty early in the film. Uh, but basically, the mission is they let out a group of like new new people. There's a whole new cast of characters in this one, and including Harley Quinn, of course, um, and uh, Rick Flagg, who's always the kind of like the leader of it. Um, uh, he's not a prisoner; he's just like the leader of the team, I guess, if you will. And they basically have to go. There's they believe that there's like some extra extraterrestrial being that may be like being housed at like this this like remote island location. And they basically have to go in there to basically, I guess, stop whatever's going on there and kind of infiltrate uh, the people there as well. And that's kind of the general principle of the mission without going too much into details. Uh, like I said, it's an action comedy. There's a, a bunch of characters. Obviously, a lot of the characters are real people. Some of them are, uh, you know, like half sharks, half human. <laughs> they can talk. Uh, there's a, a weasel character. There's, there's a bunch of, you know, people that have like, you know, special powers and things of that nature, um, that kind of make up the team in the unit, but long story short, I thought it was fun. I thought it was funny. Um, I enjoyed it. I also enjoyed the first one as well. So, um, I think I like this one. Maybe it's a little bit more. Um, I maybe had a few smiter gripes with the, the end 
reveal of the the I'm gonna say the big villain, I guess, if you will. Um, I, I it was a little cheesy, I thought, in some parts <laughs> towards the end, but um, you know, but I don't know. It was I, I try not to be too harsh on it, but there, there was a little bit of extra cheese I felt like towards the end. That'd be my only small gripe on it, but other than that, I thought it was a really good, solid uh, action, fun film. So um, it, I've heard it's been compared to like basically the um, like the guardian guardian of the galaxy. Uh, for DC, basically, um, for you know what I mean. It's kind of like the Marvel's, you know, DC's version of Guardians of the Galaxy. It was like a group of like weird misfits to get put together to do a mission together. Which I guess, in a nutshell, you could I, I could see that I could see that argument being made. Um, and we both like the Guardian of the Galaxy films as well. So, um, but overall, yeah, I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. Um, I watched this one at home. I didn't watch it in the theater. Um, I saw this one at home. So, um, so you can get it. Uh, it's streaming on. HBO Max, I believe. Yeah, it's one of the WB HBO Max movies. Yeah. yeah. yeah so I watched it at home, too. Um, I would have liked to go to the theater, but I can't uh, really drive right now. So <laughs> so this one, I was grateful. You know, I would have liked to see it on the big screen, um, but I was grateful to be able to watch it at home. Yeah. In this case, yeah. Yeah, and I know we've had this other discussion. That's a whole nother discussion about whether, you know, films at home or films in theaters but um you know looking at the box office numbers and maybe that'll change with covid ever ending i don't know but i i think that a lot of the films now um i know that like like with black widow there's been some issues with that one because uh they started it off in theaters but then they also started streaming it on uh disney plus which kind of really killed the box office for that film um, and that's doing a lot with like some of these other films where they start off with a pretty good uh, opener, but then they're losing like anywhere between 40 and 60 percent in their second week. Um, so that's kind of a concerning trend. Um, and there's definitely more people that are advocating wanting to stay at home and watch films, which, you know, I like to go to the theater sometimes as well. I think it's fun to get out and go to the theaters. Um, but I also do love having the option of not always having to go to the theaters to watch a new big hot movie because even if I have to pay 20 bucks for it sometimes, I, I wouldn't necessarily mind it because I feel like if you're going to the movies with two people, you're going to spend 20 bucks easily more than sometimes 20 bucks just for one person, depending on which theater you're going to. Um, you know, so I don't mind watching them at home. Um, I do hope that theaters are here to stay, uh, but it is a very concerning and troubling sign when you look at like, I think like the biggest movie of the year might've been either Black Widow or the Fast and Furious movies. And neither one of those movies did more than like 200 million at the box office, which, or is going to do that. So that's kind of a concern when we're so used to seeing box office numbers being like 800 million, a billion, you know what I mean? Stuff like that. So it's definitely uh, been hurting the box office overall. So that'll be interesting. Just a little side note. So Yeah, dude, I think it's just, it's too soon to tell. I mean, like we're, we're living in the moment. I mean, like I, I, it's still a developing story. You know what I mean? This is kind of something that I don't think we're going to know the answer to until like we can look back on it a little bit. You know what I mean? Cause I mean, we're, it's still a developing story. I mean, two months ago, I thought, you know, it was not over, but I thought like, you know, when, when we could go out and like, we were told that like, we couldn't, we, we could go without masks if we're vaccinated indoor or outdoor. And basically if you're vaccinated, you can go back to regular life. I bought it, you know, I, I went all in for it. And I, I, I thought um, everything was, you know, going back. And then here we are again with uh, not quite the same as before, but now everybody's getting paranoid again and masks and all that kind of stuff. So I don't, I think it's too soon to tell with that stuff. Um, so I don't want to guess. I just know that I love going to see movies on a big screen, but uh, anyway, like he said, we've talked about that lots and lots of times. Yeah. So I guess we'll just see how it shakes out. I mean, we'll know in 10 years, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully. but uh, <laughs> hopefully. Um, yeah, I know. I know. I know the, the um, running, anyway, the running gag is, is when we were past COVID, which at this point, I have no clue. You know what I mean? I thought that yeah. based on the things that were happening over the summer that, you know what I mean? I felt like by, we, as we got into the fall, you know, maybe we can stop talking about it on a day to day basis as people are getting vaccinated and that kind of stuff. But then with these variants and this isn't the first, there's, 
you know, now they're saying we may have to get an additional booster shot on top of the shots we've already gotten. So, you know, so I don't know. So, <laughs> so, um, so we're just kind yeah. of at the will of whatever they tell us. So, but I, I, if I'm a betting man, I don't think that this is, this is anything that's, I, I can kind of foresee this going well into 2022 at this point. So, um, um, in some capacity at the very least. So. Awesome. Not really. Yeah. <laughs> it's, based on, it's based on everything that we're seeing yeah. with the spikes and things of that nature. So, because it's going to take a couple months just to get this Delta variant under control, and that's barring no other variant that comes through. So, yeah. But yeah, but I digress. Suicide Squad. Yes, <laughs> yeah, Suicide Squad. <laughs> um, yeah, I love this movie, man. I thought it was a blast. Um, I had so much fun with this movie. Um, as you know, you know, and maybe some people who are you know regular viewers know. I'm not, I'm not really into superheroes or comic books, really, um, but that it's not to say that I don't like a lot of the movies on a standalone basis. You know, maybe that's why I do like Suicide Squad, the first one, because I didn't read the comics, and I'm sure it violated all kinds of stuff with the comics, but I don't care. I, to me, it was just a fun action movie, yeah. um, and I actually don't even think that Jared Leto was a bad Joker. I know that's an, also an unpopular opinion. I don't think he was any Heath Ledger or uh, Jack Nicholson, but I thought he did the job for the movie he was in. Um, but this movie, even though I did like the 2016 version, this movie I thought blew that one out of the water. Yeah, you know, I would it did. agree. I think this um, one blew it out of the water. Uh, I think the budget might have felt like it was a little bigger as well. Um, and I think that that it's and it's um, the first one kind of looked like it was going for the the DC darkness of it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It just felt like a darker, heavier film because of the elements. Where it felt like this one was a lot more light um and and fun in some kind of ways um you know um i just it just didn't feel like it was as dark to me um which i think made it just more fun and funny i felt like so i felt like they definitely added more humor to this one you know at the very least versus the other one it felt a little more serious in tone outside of harley quinn um a lot of the characters were, were pretty serious you know for the most part whereas this one was a lot more comical almost all the characters had their moments to give funny one-liners and things of that nature. I just felt like it was a little bit more humor in this one. So just made it more fun for me in that standpoint, I think. So just my take. Yeah. Yeah. And also um, this one is def like extremely R rated though. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, no, uh, yeah, absolutely. They, yeah. It is definitely R rated. Yeah. Sure. And yeah, the, the first, the 20, yeah, the 2016 movie was PG 13. And, you know, I think it's, it was a PG-13 movie that wanted to be an R-rated movie, I think. Um, so I think maybe that's one of the things that may uh, be a target for the first one. Um, but, yeah, this one, it's funny that the, the PG-13 one was darker and more serious in tone. And the R-rated one is certainly... I would say lighter in tone, but I definitely, you know, I definitely wouldn't tell my mom to go see it, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. Yeah, it, yeah. It's definitely very, very much more, more R rated and, and more violent, more blood. Oh my God. Yeah. Splatter and things of that nature also for sure. Oh yeah. And that's, that's right in, right in line with the director. You know, I'm a big James Gunn fan. Um, going back to, you know, he wrote the script, uh, for the Dawn of the Dead remake that, which was great. And then, um, you know, he's just, you know, this movie to me is right in line with his other movies. You know, I'm, I'm a big fan of Slither. I'm a big fan of Super. Um, and he also directed the two Guardians of the Galaxy movies. So this movie, if you think about it, it's kind of all of those movies put together. Like it's Guardians of the Galaxy um, and it's it's Super at the same time because it's kind of the uh, the, you know, dark, weird, violent, bloody side of the superhero uh, right. uh style and it's also you know it's 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 got some horrific elements you know like i just rewatched before this came out i rewatched slither because it had been a really long time and it's kind of funny like i don't want to go into spoilers of course but the uh there are some elements of slither that i recognized in how the main villain the monster works i'll got just it. put it that way i can see that with yeah. the uh mind control hive right. mind kind of stuff yeah. you know yeah um so this movie was kind of all of his other movies put together in a way um and if i did have some you know it is it is it is a little long you know i did get you know it, it did feel a little bit long by the end but really i mean 
it'd be nitpicking to 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 talk about things I didn't like about it because I just I had a ball from pretty much beginning to end. So yeah, yeah, no, I definitely uh, like yeah. it. I felt maybe it was a little long, and like I said, I maybe had a few issues with the the cheesiness of the main villain. But other than that, I, <laughs> I really did enjoy it. So I thought it was a really great, great film. So yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely one of my favorites of this year so far. Cool. Yep. Yeah. I'd, um... I don't know if it's going to make my top 10 or not. I'd have to really think about that. Um, but, you know, it's too early to tell for something of that nature. But I definitely like it. So it would, at this point, yeah. definitely be, at the very least, an honorable mention. So, <laughs> but uh, I still have a lot more films to watch, of course. So, cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, anything else you want to add about the Suicide Squad? Nope. All right, cool. Let's get into those reviews. Uh, overall grade and face you would give this one. Um, I gave it a four and a half out of five, so an A minus. So just shy of uh, exactly the movie it wanted to be. So that's a big smile. So yeah, cool. I almost knocked uh, the fan over here. <laughs> uh, you know me, I'm always a little, little, little bit lower, about a star lower than you. I gave it a three and a half out of five. Um, but I really did enjoy it. I thought it was really great. Um, so that's for me. It's just gonna be a big smile. Put some teeth. Gotta have those teeth. <laughs> That's right. You gotta have them. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Great. Great. Well, uh, you know, let us know down in the comments. Have you seen the Suicide Squad? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Uh, are we right on the money? Or were we completely way off? Let us know down in the comment. As always, if you like the channel, we ask that you like, subscribe, make sure you hit that bell notification, and we'll be back soon with another show for you guys again real soon. Thank you for watching. Hope you have a great day. Bye. Bye.